Hi there, welcome back to Life by Randy. And I'm starting a new series called LBR's Health Hints today. In this episode, we're going to discuss ways to nurture yourself, to put self-care as a priority, and particularly when we're going through a challenging time experiencing grief. Don't want to dwell on it, but I do want to mention that my beloved Simba, uh, our four-legged family member, made his transition back to Source God Creator on July 7th, 2023. And if you've ever lost a four-legged family member or any other, like a bird is a two-legged family member, uh, we take in these beautiful high vibration animals that grace our homes and enhance our lives in immeasurable ways. And when they leave, when they transition, they leave such a big void. And so we're experiencing that. I'm experiencing that. He came to us in 2006, and so he died nearly 17 years old, or he left his physical vessel. And his soul, his spirit is now free, and he joined Samson, his uh, litter mate, his brother, who made his transition to Creator, back to Creator Source, in October of 2020. That was a hard one for me. That was my telepathic, uh, animal connection that I had and we certainly missed them and I gave myself a couple days probably two days of mm, solid grief and then I had to dig into my toolbox of what makes me feel better and then do that you see when I was younger I would and I think a lot of us do I would lean too heavily on loved ones in my life to help fix a problem to help fix me or make me feel better about circumstances and situations. And I learned over time that really only I could do that. I, as you know, love standing in my sovereignty. I'm a sovereign being. And that means I'm responsible for myself. And that also means I'm responsible for my grief. And I don't want that to spill over into my relationships. And really give others that burden of making me feel better. So I'm going to share with you some tools I have in my toolbox because over the course of the decades that I've lived, I have put in a lot of tools in my personal tool bag. And I'm going to share some of those with you today. And if you're going through anything, which who isn't? on a scale of 1 to 10, life is, life is challenging, but it's how we deal with those challenges that makes all the difference. So stay tuned, if you will, and join me on my self-care journey, and this is the first in the series, on LVR's Health Hints, and this one is to soothe your soul, soothe yourself, in dealing with any kind of loss. Thanks for tuning in and sharing your time with me. What I do is I like warm water in my foot bath. So I take my filtered water from my Berkey, I warm it up a little bit. Oh, perfect. And then I put this in my Dead Sea Salt chlorine dioxide, essential oil, lavender, and my baking soda concoction, and sit for about 30 to 40 minutes. I have this neck and shoulder wrap I've had actually for many years. It's filled with lavender and uh, another compound, but you heat it up in the microwave and then it wraps your neck and shoulders where we carry a lot of tension. Warm that up in the microwave. And prepare for my foot bath. So what goes in my foot bath is dead sea salt loaded with magnesium. And I put about a cup in. They also use baking soda sodium bicarbonate. 
what this does is alchemize your body in diseases like cancer. They, uh, cancer and other diseases love an acidic environment. They thrive in it. This helps alkalize it. And that's the opposite of acidic. And one of my secrets is this. These two together, part A and part B, part A is sodium chloride and part B is hydrochloric acid. What I do is I put in for my foot bath, 25 drops each. You let that sit for about 45 seconds before putting your warm filtered water in. There are amazing benefits of chlorine dioxide, but this is an absolute game changer. And why foot baths are so important is that they provide a detoxifying effect. We have the largest pores on the bottoms of our feet. And so what we put our feet into absorbs it in a very profound way. And so you can really detoxify or help detoxify your entire body by doing foot baths. I also put in some uh, lavender essential oils. It's just my preference for foot baths, but when I'm not feeling well, I can put in eucalyptus essential oil. The different oils actually support different body systems, but lavender is relaxing. This with my chamomile tea I'm gonna make, I need some relaxing and soothing for, for my day to day. Now I love using essential oils in a diffuser. Those candles that smell so pretty oftentimes give out very, very toxic fumes. This, using essential oils, it's not toxic and it actually has health benefits. I'm gonna go over later in the video the health benefits of frankincense and frankincense combined with myrrh. Of course, the wise men knew in their wisdom how awesome frankincense and myrrh is. And what I do is I'll put in a lot. I like, I like it to smell very fragrant. Put it in. I'm going to plug it in and then use this for my foot bath time of self-care. So for today's self-care routine, I want to give you some science, some facts, and some studies behind the products that I use today. So let's start out with this amazing frankincense and myrrh. I love the combination, although you can just use frankincense separately and myrrh separately. I happen to like the combination and it smells heavenly. But in addition to its amazing scent that's very healthy for you. What does it do? Well, the health benefits of frankincense, um, research shows that frankincense along with myrrh has been prescribed in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries and administered for the treatment of blood stagnation and inflammatory diseases. It helps with pain relief and swelling. And so many have inflammation and inflammation is the gateway to so many other diseases. So we always want to be mindful to get our inflammation under control. Listen to this. Frankincense and myrrh may help fight cancer. Fascinating. If you see my cabbage episode and uh, the link is below, I spoke to my craving of cabbage, which is a cruciferous vegetable while the time I was filled with cancer. So from diagnosis to cancer free or NED, no evidence of disease was five months. But during that time and for about a year and a half after, I was craving cabbage, cabbage soup, raw cabbage. I couldn't get enough of it. Well, it's a cruciferous vegetable that helps detox the liver and has all kinds of health benefits and, and, and cancer 
fighting benefits. Well, during the time that I also was filled with cancer, I developed my addiction, if you will, to frankincense and myrrh. And because our bodies are always speaking to us, listen to this. A study done by nine doctors in China revealed frankincense combined with myrrh may help in the treatment of cancer, specifically breast cancer, which is what I had, spread to the bones. Boswellic, and I think I'm saying that right, boswellic acid might prevent cancer cells from spreading, which is in frankincense and myrrh. Helps with breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic, skin, and colon cancer, specifically studies on that. In a, another study discussed in the Cancer Journal in 2001, patients with brain tumors also uh, took frankincense, and they've got uh, studies that reduce the fluid on the brain compared to 26% of the people with placebo. So it helps with other kinds of cancer as well. Fascinating, right? So got the, I still have frankincense and myrrh going in our home uh, many times during the week. And again, better than those toxic candles. Be very, very careful with those scented candles. Okay, so let's go to the chamomile tea. Again, it has anti-inflammatory properties. Drinking chamomile tea may aid in digestion and may protect against certain types of cancer. The antioxidants found in chamomile tea have been linked with a lower incidence of certain kinds of cancer. Chamomile contains the antioxidant epigenin. Again, don't know if I'm saying that right. In test tube study, epigenin has been shown to fight cancer cells, especially those of the breast, digestive tract, skin, prostate, and uterus. And it goes on to talk about the studies. I'll link to that below. Again, let's not forget about all the God-given herbs that really are here to serve us and to help heal these amazing bodies that our Creator designed. It, truly, truly amazing. Another natural item we've used today is the Dead Sea Salt. And I buy, you see, in 15-pound bags off of Amazon. And you can use Epsom salt as well, and it's similar. And sometimes I alternate between the two. I buy 20-pound bags of Epsom salt from Amazon, keep it on hand. That's how much we use it. But interestingly, the, there are health benefits specifically of the Dead Sea salt. And the Dead Sea lies at the bottom of a deep valley, and it's actually a part of a much larger sea that was left over 2 million years ago sitting at 1,300 feet below the sea level. This is the lowest natural place on Earth, so the concentration of the salt is magnificent. And it's 10 times more than what you would find in any of the oceans. So the dead sea salt is clean and untouched air. The air makes for a very healing environment. And so since I'm not flying over to the dead sea, what I do is get the dead sea salt. And there are so many benefits of that kind of salt. Specifically, it calms down the nervous system. We've talked about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems and how it's important to stimulate the vagus nerve to calm down that fight or flight response. We want a strong parasympathetic nervous system. And this helps with that. So it helps calm your, your nerves. It reduces stress, reduces inflammation, so I will link to those below. Also, the health benefits of lavender essential oil. So according to the Cleveland Clinic website, it supports sleep, it's calming. It helps with moods like anxiety and depression. It reduces pain and inflammation. Even kills harmful viruses and bacteria. So I always put that in, sometimes I put it in my diffuser, but I always put it in a, a bath, a detox bath, or my foot bath as well. And then chlorine dioxide. So chlorine dioxide is a bit controversial, and I don't know why. It was discovered in 1976 by a man named Jim Humble, and he was in Africa, and he gave 
during a major malaria outbreak, many people there chlorine dioxide, and it cured the malaria. And again, there's lots of studies on chlorine dioxide, and I would suggest you do your own research. I would suggest also that you use other search engines other than Google, like Freespoke, because of the censorship, specifically with chlorine dioxide. My understanding of how it works, and it's a simplistic way of explaining all the science behind it, and there's a fabulous documentary on chlorine dioxide as well called the universal antidote. But for purposes of this video, you do equal parts sodium chloride and hydrochloric acid. It forms a gas called chlorine dioxide once ingested. Our red blood cells take that gas as they ride along our system looking for a diseased cell of any kind. And once it finds it, the gas steals the electrons from the cell, and without the electrons, the diseased cell can't survive. It's a simplistic way of looking at it. That's how I um, digest it. And for me, it has worked, and I'm a big believer in it. So I leave that to you. I hope that you found my health hints helpful. And if they resonate with you, and if they don't, that's fine too. Life by Randy is here to inform and not convince. We are all sovereign beings and we get to make up our own minds about what is beneficial for us and how we want to live our lives and what we choose to do. Remember, we are free and sovereign beings.